Hey friends! Before we dive into today's audiobook adventure, I just wanted to chat with you for a sec. Your support means everything to me. Seriously, every like, comment, and subscribe keeps me pumped to bring you more awesome audiobooks. So, can I ask a favor? Give that like button a quick tap to show some love. It's like a little virtual high five. And hey, drop a comment down below. I love hearing from you and it keeps me motivated. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss a story. Alright, enough talk. Let's jump into the magic of storytelling together. Chapter 11, Forgive Me, Brother Atop Zephyr Tower, those seated stood up in shock. Their eyes were glued to Zephyr Square, looks of disbelief written across their faces. How could that be? Didn't Li Twenming lose all his beast key? Three years, that's enough to end any beast master's career. But Zifeng is seventh level beast vein. Did Li Twenming use some kind of dirty trick? Madame Mo had a stern look on her face. Li Twenming, the joke of Flame Haven, the boy that everyone thought would be gone for good, had returned with power that matched Li Zifeng's. So his appearance today really wasn't a joke. Probably the only one whose jaw didn't drop was Madame Huang, who had already seen what Li Tuanming was capable of beforehand. Even Li Xuejiao couldn't hide her surprise. After all, she wanted her second brother to teach Li Tuanming a lesson on her behalf, but the tables had turned. Oh? Interesting. He probably recovered a while ago and was hiding it the entire time. The corners of Liu Qing's lips curled upwards. He must have found a new life-bound beast to prevent the loss of his beast key. Too bad it is, but a worthless one-star life-bound beast, he can never go beyond the beast vein stage. The chain of events threw Li Yang Feng off guard as well, but he immediately managed to find an explanation for it. If Li Chuenming had made use of sacrificial techniques to find a new life-bound beast the moment he returned to Flame Haven, then it was true that he could somewhat stop the dissipation of his beast key, thereby preserving a certain amount of strength. But the people of Flamehaven didn't understand the reason behind all these, as evidenced by how they gawked at the brothers. As a result, being the one with the lower hand, Li Zifeng was almost driven crazy. Malice twisted his face as Li Zifeng drew out a sword. It was a vicious steel sword, crafted with top quality spirit ores and infused with the blood of life bound beasts. These kinds of weapons were known as bestial weapons, and were far more powerful than regular weapons, especially in the hands of beast masters. On top of that, bestial weapons could also synergize with life-bound beasts. This blue steel sword has yet to drink your blood before. Li Zifeng pointed his sword at Li Tuanming. He had underestimated his opponent, and he would not let that happen again. And my crimson blood dagger was never meant to drink the blood of my own brothers, but I guess there are always exceptions to everything. Li Tuanming drew a scarlet dagger from his sleeve. It was about 15 centimeters long, with a blade the length of his finger. The entire body of the dagger was a bloody red, making it look like the fangs of a venomous snake. In terms of weapon quality, the crimson blood dagger was just as good as the blue steel sword. It had been Li Tuanming's weapon for a long time, being able to kill in a single deadly blow. And yet, who could have imagined that the brothers would point at each other with real blades in hand, aiming for the other's life? Why did you come here to shame yourself? With your one-star life-bound beast, you are just some garbage stuck in beast vein. Once I get the flame yellow order, I will be so powerful that you'll grovel at my feet three years from now. As he spoke, Li Zifeng swung his blue steel sword, his steps suddenly increasing in speed. This was the intermediate beast rank battle art, the wind riding steps, which greatly increased his agility. But even that paled in comparison to the sword arts he was using. As the sword danced in the air, it was clear that he was using the blazing tornado sword from the Li Manor, an advanced beast rank battle art. With the blazing tornado sword, Li Zifeng had created a gust of wind, the sword hidden within the gale as it swung towards Li Tuanming. At the same time, the purple-eyed bright bird had also used the bestial art of blazing tornado wings to sweep up a cyclone, its wings now like two giant knives that swept towards the chick. The battlefield was divided into two, but both sides were just as exciting. Die for me! Li Zifeng screamed. 
his sword struck from multiple directions, stirring up a wave of flame that surrounded Li Tuenming. A vortex of flame engulfed Li Tuenming, its interior brimming with countless strands of sword key that threatened to tear Li Tuenming apart. This move was a true reflection of Li Zifeng's strength, as no one under the seventh level of the Beast Vein stage could possibly block it. The heat emanating from the tornado of flames alone was enough to burn most people to a crisp. Are you dead yet? Li Tuenming. You're just a stray dog that should have died long ago, so stop haunting me. Li Zifeng was already in a state of frenzy. Confidence surged within him as he watched his blazing tornado sword swallow Li Tuenming, which swiftly gave way to fear as he realized something. Where was Li Tuenming? You are right, I am here to haunt you. Li Zifeng felt a chill run down his spine as a voice spoke from right beside his ears. He froze as hot metal rested on his neck, daring him to move an inch. By now, the audience could see that Li Tuenming had already appeared behind Li Zifeng, his crimson blood dagger pressed right against Li Zifeng's throat. If he so willed it, Li Zifeng would have perished. In fact, ghost steps wasn't the only thing that got Li Tuenming there. There was another trick up his sleeve that had decided his fate. It was a supreme beast rank battle art, the Bloody Soul Hunt. It was the strongest battle art that Li Tuenming practiced and was meant to be used with the Crimson Blood Dagger. As the pinnacle of beast rank battle arts, few had succeeded in mastering it. It wasn't an offensive battle art, but a cross between a movement art and assassination art. Fast. Precise. The essence was to strike like lightning at the perfect instant to bring death to its opponents. It might not appear much, but Li Tianming had to practice it thousands of times a day just to achieve the effect of a one-shot kill. PSSS. Without hesitation, Li Tuenming sliced the dagger across Li Zifeng's arms, causing blood to spurt out. Ah! Beads of sweat popped out of Li Zifeng's forehead as he trembled uncontrollably. Zifeng, you shall pay for all your insults and your mockery. Now take this. Li Tuenming's voice was like a demon's and with each sentence, the crimson blood dagger drew a new line on Li Zifeng's body, the latter shrieking in pain the entire time. All the acts you have done, all the crimes you have committed, do you really think no one knew about them? They just didn't dare to touch you because you had Li Yangfeng as your backer. As a matter of fact, Li Tuenming wanted to teach Li Zifeng a lesson a long time ago. During the three years of his absence, there was no one controlling Li Zifeng, who went on to do whatever he wanted in Flame Haven. Despite committing a mountain of malicious deeds, his talent and family had enabled him to elude retribution. If your father is not going to teach you about basic manners, then I will do it. Just because you're the governor's son doesn't mean you can look down on others. This elder brother will today teach you the meaning of everyone is born equal. Today, I'll teach you how to spell the karma. This slash, do you like it? With each sentence he said, Li Tuenming landed a new slash on Li Zifeng, slashes that were intended to cause great pain without creating lethal wounds. In total, he lashed out six times on his limbs and butt cheeks. Forgive me brother, I learned my lesson, please release me. Dad, mum, help me. Li Zifeng howled miserably, his face paler than paper. His blue steel sword had long fallen from his hands, completing a picture of a one-sided defeat. No one possibly expected this battle to be so one-sided. The image of the youth standing on the stage had already created a lasting image in everybody's mind, but that wasn't all. Even more terrifying the sight of a blood-soaked huge bird dropping on the ground as Li Zifeng capitulated. It was none other than the purple-eyed bright bird. As the purple-eyed bright bird struggled feebly a little chick landed beside it, its mouth stuffed with feathers. You stupid stinking bird, do you know how to take a shower? Even your feathers are so damn smelly. The little chick shuddered as it spat out the feathers in its mouth, gagging and dry heaving the entire time. How could a cute little thing like this gravely injure the purple-eyed bright bird over ten times its size? Was it even possible for a one-star life-bound beast? An irritated Li Tuenming, a blood-stained crimson blood dagger, and a grumbling little chick. The governor's manner sank into an unprecedented, awed silence from their very presence. Chapter 12, You're Not Worthy Wasn't he crippled? It was Li Zifeng who looked like the real cripple here. 
What a horrific loss. He's just crying and crying. Is it that painful? To be honest, young Master Ziffing has always been a bully. Being beaten like this can kinda be considered poetic justice. Many soft discussions started. Li Ziffing's reputation immediately came crashing down. There were some words that no one would dare to voice out loud, but kicking someone when they were down was something that came naturally to the audience. Within moments, Li Zifeng's conduct in the last three years was brought to light. Now, everyone was waiting for Li Yinfeng's response. And as Li Zifeng expected, his father got up after the six strikes. My lord, quickly save Zifeng, then execute this rebel. Madame Mo wailed. She wanted to step forward herself, but she didn't dare to. Everyone was watching Li Yangfeng. This was supposed to be his joyous occasion, and this had to be a huge slap in his face, especially when it came to the reputation-conscious Li Yangfeng. Furthermore, Zephyr Tower was filled with many dignitaries as well. They may not say anything to his face, but they would definitely ridicule him behind his back after this. Li Tuanming could feel a gaze boring at him, and he released Li Zifeng, who crumpled over at his feet. Dad, Mom, save me! Li Zifeng crawled away like a dog, scrambling off the stage without even caring about his purple-eyed bright bird. Mother, this was for you. This time, it was all to stick up for her, as well as himself. For his lost dignity, for the justice he deserved. Wei Jing's dignity had been cast aside with a divorce letter, while Li Tuanming's had been lost for three years. Li Tuanming was prepared to crush anything in his way, consequences be damned. Today, he would rampage as much as he wanted. He was already displaying the beginnings of greatness. This day would definitely be left in the annals of Flamehaven history. Li Tuanming lifted his head, meeting his father's gaze by chance. The latter's eyes were grim, evident from his clenched, twitching fist, a last-ditch attempt to control his emotions. Li Tuanming may have pissed him off, but he was still a man with a city under him, his dignity was at stake. An excellent performance, Chen Ming. It pleases me to see your perseverance, despite the past three years, Li Yangfeng said blandly. Why, thank you. The exchange seemed amicable on the surface, but was in truth fraught with tension. In truth, Li Tuanming had told Li Yangfeng how he had been framed when he returned from Ignispolis. However, the silent reply he received made him realize that his father feared Lightning Manor too much to offend them. At that moment, Li Tuanming had been incredibly disappointed. Even though he had the high and lofty position of commanding Flamehaven, he chose to give up Li Tuanming in the face of the colossal lightning manor, while tossing aside his mother as an afterthought. That divorce letter of his had been his most vicious move yet, and Li Tuanming had carved each and every word into his memory. Where was the mutual respect between husband and wife, and why was it instead a knife in the back? The two might be father and son in blood, but Li Tianming didn't want to be involved with this man anymore. So, what were you aiming for by defeating Zifeng? Li Yangfeng didn't want to shed all pretense of cordiality here, so he adopted a gentle tone to maintain a pretense of equal treatment. But no one brought that story. Everyone knew that Li Yangfeng was about to marry someone from Lightning Manor, an organization that Li Tianming had a blood feud with. Li Yenfeng's concerns with his reputation was the only thing stopping him from killing his son on the spot. The Flame Yellow Order, as well as for you to escort me out of Flame Haven just like for years ago. Just do it again. Henceforth, I shall never step a foot into Flame Haven again. Li Tuanming's words were clear and resolute. The purpose of this was for his dignity, as he didn't want the divorce letter to force his mother and him to leave this city like homeless dogs. His words left everyone shocked. Didn't he withdraw from the Flame Yellow Science Institute himself as his cultivation regressed? And now he wants to go back? Why does he want to go back? He's the butt of their jokes there. Lin Xiaoting and Mu Qingqing are geniuses of Heaven's Division and are a gazillion times stronger than him. He's just asking to be embarrassed. But it's obvious that he doesn't want to stay here or repair his relationship with the governor. Yeah. Wanting the governor to send him off just seems to be a way to go with some dignity. It makes sense from his perspective. Everyone was waiting for Li Yinfeng's decision. 
However, the man himself merely frowned. You just have a one-star life-bound beast. Your current strength comes from what you trained in the past with Midas. The beast vein stage is your limit in life. Even if you do get the Flame Yellow Order, the Flame Yellow Science Institute is not going to accept you. That's not your problem. The order belongs to me, for I'm first place. Whatever follows, I'll deal with it myself. Since my position has been stripped, Sir Governor, our relations end here. No matter how I embarrass myself, it won't drag you in, said Li Tianming. This display of backbone by a youth, especially when talking to Li Yangfeng, had garnered grudging respect from the audience. It seems like he's going to get what he wants. Everything this fellow did today really was outrageous. Actually, he does have quite the backbone. The mockery had ceased. Even if he was no longer a Flamehaven citizen, the jeering from now on would lessen greatly. Dad, the order is mine, mine. You can't let him have it. Li Zifeng struggled to his feet in a panic. My lord, since we're being ruthless anyway, why not go all the way and, Madame Mo whispered into his ear. Scram. Li Yang Feng gave her a look, which quickly frightened Madame Mo into a corner. It seemed that under the public eye, Li Yang Feng could only agree to the request. My flame yellow order. And send us out of the city. Li Tuanming stressed every word, each one landing like a hammer on the hearts of those watching. Li Tuanming thought of his mother. She had to be still in the courtyard, unable to sleep as she stewed in her anxiousness. She might be pacing about to and fro. While she might have never said anything, she had once married into Flamehaven even more grandly than Liu Qing had. There was no way she would ever accept such a pathetic departure, especially at her twilight. Sir Governor. Li Tianming said one final time, his eyes burning as he stared at Li Yangfeng. He found it laughable when he saw the unspoken thought of unfilial son written on his father's face. He saw the rage and humiliation playing across his features. What can you do no matter how angry you are? Li Tuanming felt rather upbeat to see this reaction. Li Tuanming had ruined this joyous occasion, leaving Li Yangfeng with no choice but to swallow his anger. He couldn't toss aside his dignity as a father and governor in front of so many dignitaries. Remember well, governor. You don't qualify to divorce her. Today, the only reason we're leaving is because you are not worthy of her. How embarrassing. Such conversations began to flow. Only Li Yangfeng knew how it felt to be embarrassed so publicly. It was at this moment that a woman walked to his side and held onto Li Yenfeng's arm. Liu Qing. She smiled gently at Li Tuanming, her lips parted slightly and her eyes seeming to speak volumes. Tianming, it's not good for a young man to be so hot-tempered, Liu Qing said gently. Her beauty was not tarnished by a common baseness like so many others, and her words were a reflection of that. Elaborate, madam. Li Tuanming didn't have a favorable impression of this woman, as she was from Lightning Manor. She smiled. What I mean is that there is still one more flamehaven genius in the running for this selection. Her words confused everyone, Li Tuanming included. Who else was there? Liu Qing herself? But she was over twenty and in the spirit source stage. Who else could it be? Chapter 13, Manor at Red Twill Mountain It wasn't just Li Tuanming that didn't understand what Liu Qing was talking about. Most of the crowd, including even Madame Mo and Li Zifeng, had no idea that there were others participating in the selection. After all, there were only so many competitors in the vicinity of Flame Haven, all of them renowned. Li Yenfeng's gaze towards Li Tianming turned even colder, but as he turned back to face someone else, a gentle smile appeared, tenderness and praise written all over his face. Chen Yang, although you came from another place, you're also a citizen of Flame Haven given that I have married your sister. He looked at a boy about the age of fifteen sitting behind him, immediately putting him in the limelight. The teenagers in Flamehaven are way too inexperienced, and have no idea what a real prodigy is capable of. You may be young, but remember as my brother-in-law, you have higher seniority than them all. Now go show them true talent. Go, Chen Yang. Liu Qing urged the boy, while still holding on to Li Yenfeng's hand. 
that was enough information for everyone. This boy, Liu Qianyang, was Liu Qing's brother, meaning he was also from the Lightning Manor. The first wife's brother is considered part of Flamehaven as well. So the governor wants him to contest for the Flame Yellow Order as well? Did they just agree on this, or had they planned this all along? Most people were taken by surprise, considering that this didn't look like a spontaneous decision. Li Yangfeng apparently never intended to hand the order over to Li Zifeng, which explained why the order wasn't passed to him, despite announcing him as the heir. The two sons were fighting over the prize, but it was actually prepared for his bride's brother. No one dared to question or contest the governor, and the entire place was dead silent. Everyone stared at the boy from Lightning Manor as he rose up from his seat atop Zephyr Tower. As people gradually got a clearer look, it was blatantly obvious that the so-called geniuses of Flamehaven were fireflies compared to this real prodigy. He looked younger than Li Zifeng, his skin a pale white and his looks resembling Liu Qing's. He had an elegant and intelligent look, and his eyes sparkled like gems in the dark. Perhaps most impressive was the grace that infused his every movement. Only a colossus like the Lightning Manor could nurture someone with such aptitude. In comparison, the noisy, ruthless Li Zifeng was nowhere close to Liu Qianyang. Liu Qianyang's appearance alone was enough to gain the praises of the crowd, just as he was surely capable of making people forget about the youths of Flame Haven. Qianyang, if you want the Flame Yellow Order, you have to earn it. Liu Qing advised as she adjusted his clothing. Yes sister, and thank you brother-in-law. The boy was very polite, giving him a gentle and obedient image. But that in no way meant he was weak, as everyone knew what his appearance meant. Li Yangfeng was still one step ahead of Li Tuanming. Li Tuanming thought that by defeating Li Zifeng, he could obtain the Flame Yellow Order, but he hadn't expected the existence of Liu Qianyang, especially as the true recipient of the Flame Yellow Order. From the warmth Li Yangfeng was showing Liu Qianyang, everyone knew that he had made this decision long ago. After all, he never even showed his two sons this kind of care before. To be honest, Li Tuanming felt like he underestimated how low Li Yenfeng's bottom line was. More importantly, the sight of Liu Qianyang's face, one that resembled a girl's, had dredged up a memory or two. Three years ago, Lin Xiaoting of Lightning Manor had many followers, some of them as young as eleven or twelve. Even if the boy in front of him had grown up, Li Tuanming could roughly remember his appearance back then. That's right, Li Tuanming had seen Liu Qianyang three years ago. Having obtained permission from Li Yangfeng, Liu Qianyang leapt off Zephyr Tower, his crystal clear eyes locked onto Li Tuanming. Li Tuanming, when Big Brother Xiaoting executed your life-bound beast, I was there to witness it. Indeed, it was him. In his desperation and rage that day, Li Tuanming had burned every face from Lightning Manor into his memory to keep track of who his enemies were, and that included this kid right here. Of course, he was now a young boy. You were just this tiny bit close to getting the Flame Yellow Order. What a shame. It's troublesome to get the order in the competitive environment of Ignispolis, so I chose the easy way of entering the Institute through Flamehaven instead. As he landed onto the stage, Liu Qianyang stated his purpose here. As the brother-in-law of the governor of Flamehaven, this was by all means a legal move. From his words, Li Zifeng was fated to be a joke today too as his limit was the position as heir, while the Flame Yellow Order was an unreachable dream. The real prodigy of Lightning Manor stood at heights that Li Zifeng would never match. Your attempt to come back today was not bad. Too bad it's nothing but a final attempt. Do you know why Big Brother Shouting didn't want to kill you? It was because he didn't want to destroy all your hopes. After all, it's far more entertaining to see you struggle, no? A cold smile crept up his cheeks. Liu Qianyang wasn't the good boy he appeared to be, with every word he spoke intended to crush Li Tuanming's will. One of the main reasons why Li Tuanming wanted to return to Flame Yellow Science Institute was to seek his vengeance on this bunch of geniuses, but who knew one would find his way all the way to Flame Haven? It really does sound funny when you put it that way. I'll struggle mightily to change my fate, only for you to crush me again? Li Tuanming narrowed up his eyes. Your self-confidence is quite delicious. Let's not waste time, let me see how much you've improved in these three years. As he spoke, Liu Qianyang summoned his life-bound beast. 
Flamehaven consisted mostly of avian beasts, but things were different today when a cheetah leapt out from behind Liu Qianyang. The cheetah was swift yet massive, its claws razor sharp, and its distinct feature the bolts of lightning running through its body. It was a five-star lifebound beast, the lightning bolt cheetah, a lightning-type terrestrial beast. The lightning bolt cheetah was a creature slightly stronger than the four-winged goldrock Li Tuenming used to have. After all, five stars was the bare minimum for someone to be considered a prodigy in lightning manner. Liu Qianyang smiled, confident in his bloodline and his strength. A battle between a fourth and ninth level beast vein? Surely no sane individual would try that, since that would just be plain stupidity. Li Tuenming just needed one glance to know that it would be a one-sided battle. The reason he could beat Li Zifeng was mostly because of his fire immunity. But against the lightning-type foe, the cheetah alone would make short work of the little chick. Well let's test you if you are not going to respond. A thunderstorm brewed with a single palm from Liu Qianyang, bolstered by beast key from his ninth-level beast veins. It was a ghastly move, and just the pressure from the attack was enough to suffocate Li Tuenming. Overwhelmed by the attack, Li Tuenming was forced off the stage. As the storm persisted, the gust caught up with Li Tuenming, forcing him back another thirty steps. The difference was simply too huge. With a difference of five levels, Li Tuenming could barely stand straight in the face of the storm. Despite his raging hatred, Li Tuenming remained rational. Three years of hardship and tolerance had taught him what it took to be a hunter. A real hunter never tackles the beast head-on, but instead waits for the perfect moment to land the deadly strike. What happened today couldn't be altered, and he undoubtedly failed to achieve his goal. Nonetheless, Li Tuenming had proven himself. By defeating Li Zifeng and shaming Li Yangfeng, Li Tuenming showed that he wasn't some trash that they could toss away on a whim. As he landed, Li Tuenming looked up towards Liu Chenyang sitting on his lightning bolt cheetah, who said mildly, your beast key can only reach the sixth level of beast vein. With this one-star life-bound beast of yours, what difference is there from being crippled for life? If this is all you are capable of, then begone. You aren't worthy of being my opponent. Looking at how Li Tuenming couldn't even put up a fight against Liu Chenyang, the crowd realized the difference between Flamehaven and Lightning Manor was beyond what they had ever imagined. This Liu Chenyang was younger than Li Zifeng, and yet he was two entire levels higher. Before I go, let me ask you a question. Everyone thought Li Tuenming would be disheartened by now, but his composure turned a few heads. However, no one noticed the murderous look he was giving Liu Chenyang. He would return the humiliation of this palm back to him eventually. Sure, Liu Chenyang said, as his lightning bolt cheetah gradually grew impatient, growling restlessly. When will you be leaving Flamehaven? Li Tianming raised up his head. If Li Yangfeng couldn't scare him, why should Liu Qianyang? Probably in a month's time. Liu Qianyang thought briefly. His sister was married, and he had obtained the Flame Yellow Order, so there was no reason for him to stay too long. A month felt more than sufficient. Very well. One month later, at this very place, I will punch that annoying mug of yours. If you lose, the flame yellow order is mine. Do you dare accept my challenge? Yet again, Li Tuenming made everyone's jaw drop. He had admitted defeat, and there was no doubt his opponent was way more talented than he was. One month later Liu Qianyang would be even stronger, while he would still be just hanging off his one-star life-bound beast, so what even gave him the courage to issue that challenge? It wasn't like he could improve tremendously in just a month. What's in it for me? Liu Qianyang snorted. Just my life, said Li Tuenming. The bet's on. My brother-in-law raised you, taught you how to cultivate, even sent you to the institute. Yet you betrayed his trust, committed crimes, and refused to repent for your wrongdoings even after being punished by big brother Slao Ting. Today was supposed to be a happy occasion, and yet you chose to disturb the peace. An ungrateful little bastard like you should be removed. If my brother-in-law can't bear to kill his own flesh and blood, I'll help him clean house. Liu Qianyang announced to everyone present at the Zephyr Square the righteousness in his speech-drawing praise, especially from the nobles in Zephyr Tower. Li Tuenming laughed. What a touching speech. 
To add on to the irony, Li Yangfeng had barely reacted to everything that Liu Chenyang said, making him almost doubt whether Li Yangfeng was really his father. Throughout the past three years, Li Qianming had asked his mother this question multiple times, and since his mother never lied to him, he had to believe it was true. It was ironic indeed. An outsider from Lightning Manor, claiming to help Li Yangfeng to get rid of his own son, and Li Yangfeng didn't even react. What's more, he was holding this exact outsider's sister by the waist, staring at Li Tuanming indifferently from up high. However, since he had long given up hope on Li Yangfeng, he found it amusing rather than upsetting. So much for parenting. At least, he had secured one last chance to get the order. It was the only way for him to return to the institute, and also for Li Yangfeng to send his mother and him out of the city with dignity. Everything that happened today, and the tricks Li Yangfeng pulled off, would only delay this. The only real loser today was Li Zifeng, who was not only defeated by Li Tuanming, but also had his flame yellow order snatched away. As he gazed mutely at Liu Chenyang, he probably felt the same way as Li Tianming did when he was abandoned by their father. Karma sure worked in interesting ways. So he's going to challenge Liu Chenyang again in a month to compete for the Flame Yellow Order? Do you think that's possible? The governor said he was just relying on his past experience and he can never go beyond the Beast Vein stage. Then why did he act like he could compete with the Prodigy of the Lightning Manor? Ha! Huh? Of course he had to at least retaliate a bit before leaving, or else what is he gonna do, just crawl out like a dog? As everyone laughed, they looked at Li Tuanming sympathetically. In the end, he was just a clown, dreaming of his dramatic revenge stories. Little wonder Liu Chenyang didn't even bother with him. Only Li Tuanming himself knew that his statements were not meant as a joke. He took a final look at Li Yangfeng. On top of Zephyr Tower, the man had the young beauty in his arms, both of them chatting casually. Liu Qinyang's appearance today had disrupted everything that Li Tuanming had planned, getting Li Yangfeng out of a tight situation. But could this be the end? Just you wait and see. Would it even take a month? Night fell, as a sense of victory lingered in the bridal room. Li Yangfeng had a cup in his hand which Liu Qing refilled with alcohol constantly, the two of them clearly enjoying their time. Liu Qing's face was red from the alcohol, glowing faintly like a juicy peach. However, Li Yangfeng was properly dressed and seated, the beauty clearly not the first thing on his mind right now. Yangfeng, regarding the competition for manor at Red Twill Mountain, my brother will be relying on you. Liu Qing refilled the glasses yet again, before finishing her own portion. Her snow-white skin was especially charming in the candlelight. Don't you worry, Red Twill Mountain is my territory. Any manor there has my name written on it. Li Yangfeng was very confident. Chapter 14, A Competition Between the Geniuses of Lightning Manor Yangfeng, I'm still worried. The competition is just too intense, especially since mana is a rare resource that can increase the number of stars a lifebound beast has. We all know what that means, Liu Qing said. Indeed. A lifebound beast stars determine a beast master's talent and his highest attainable cultivation realm. Five star lifebound beasts, the best of Flame Haven, will only rank bottom in the Flame Yellow Science Institute. Li Yangfeng nodded, fiddling with his glass of alcohol. If he can evolve his beast to a six-star lifebound beast, then he will have a higher chance of interacting with Heaven Sanctum. Of course, that'll also give you more power in Lightning Manor. Since time immemorial, the birth of Manor has always caused a mad rush. Even if the one found this time is just the most basic Manor, it'll still be priceless. Yangfeng, we were truly lucky that it spawned in Red Twill Mountain, the outskirts of your flame haven. Only you can help Chen Yang secure this rare resource and let him evolve his lightning bolt cheetah. Liu Qing threw Li Yangfeng a wink while refilling his glass. Red Twill Mountain is just too large, its landscape covered by forests and rifts. There's far too many wild beasts hidden there, beasts with awakened innate abilities. It's a dangerous place, to put it mildly, Li Yangfeng explained. To let their younger generations compete and grow in such conditions, it is no wonder Lightning Manor has its current heights. Of course. 
the competition will be intense, given that there are seven other qualified disciples contesting for the loot. Thankfully, Chen Yang is probably stronger than most of them, and he'll have your help too. He stands quite the chance, Liu Qing replied. When will the other juniors arrive? And who's accompanying them, experts from Lightning Manor? Soon. I was permitted to come earlier because of our wedding. Those kids will be protected by experts, but they have certain restrictions in place once they enter Red Twill Mountain, as this is supposed to be a trial for the younger generation. So the two of us will bring Chen Yang into Red Twill Mountain three days later? Yes, every team will be entering the mountain at the same time on that day. Li Yangfeng nodded his head. Mana is split into four tiers, royal, profound, terrestrial and celestial. Even the most basic royal mana can evolve a lifebound beast to seven stars. How it works, its very existence, they remain an enigma. People can only assume it is the providence of the divine, which is why we call it mana. Top-tier mana is basically impossible to get hold of. The one we are looking at this time was just the most basic kind, one that can be barely considered royal mana, and yet the hunt for it is insane. Thankfully, the lightning mana has excellent intel and could reach here first. When Liu Qing mentioned lightning mana, her pride was glaringly evident. Li Yangfeng knew that she would always be a member of Lightning Manor and never Flamehaven, even after she married him. But that didn't matter, since he too would become part of Lightning Manor. Li Tuanming was surprised to see rain when he returned home, since the sky was clear earlier. Mother! He was afraid that his mother would be drenched by the rain. To his relief, he found her deep in slumber in her own room. How relaxed! Li Tuanming didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. He was fighting for his dignity outside, while she was happily sleeping. He waited by her bedside. Night had already fallen when she finally awoke. She smiled sheepishly at the sight of Li Tuanming, who was safe and sound by her bedside, and asked, Where's the flame yellow order? Should we be on our way now? Li Tuanming sighed at how confident his mother was. Yeah, I taught Sifeng a good lesson all right, but something happened. As a result, I didn't get the flame yellow order. And that something is? Wei Jing asked, to which Li Tuanming explained the whole incident with Liu Chenyang. One more month? I don't want to wait for so long, Flamehaven is too hot, I want to live somewhere in the north, she grumbled, reminding Li Tuanming of a child. There's no guarantee I can beat him after one month though. That's not my problem, I am giving you half a month at most. Her smile made it obvious that she was just joking with Li Tianming. All right, all right, say what you want. When I lose to him and the little chick becomes the cheetah's snack, you will know how cruel reality really is. Li Tianming smiled back. Bullshit. That pussy can dream on about eating me, cause I'm gonna peck its face off, the little chick snapped. Li Tianming snorted. Stop tooting your horn, who was the mouse on stage earlier on? Who? You must be mistaken, because I can assure you it wasn't me. I was about to rip that cat's face off, but you just had to beg me to let it off. I generously decided to let it live for another month, the little chick said somberly. Hum, I believe the little chick, it is very capable. Wei Jing looked at the little chick tenderly. See, my mum can appreciate me, unlike you, taunted the little chick, who leapt into Wei Jing's arms. Screw off, that's my mum, not yours. I'm rather sure she doesn't lay eggs. Li Tuanming was speechless with how familiar the little chick was making itself. Yeah right. I was in your lifebound space and I was born when you were. If she's not my mother, are you telling me it's you? Mommy Tuanming, the little chick retaliated. It was actually quite true when Li Tuanming thought about it. Like most beast masters, Li Tuanming treated his life-bound beast like a sibling and then some. They fought together and cultivated together, a relationship even siblings didn't have. He had treasured Midas more than his own life, and while he had only been together with this little chick for a dozen odd days, their bond could only grow firmer. Hey, since she's your mother too, why not let her name you? It's too much trouble to call you little chick all the time. Li Tuanming had a sudden idea. My name is Eternal Infernal Phoenix, 
the little chick proclaimed proudly. Too long, we need a nickname. Mother, you can have the honors. Li Tuenming knew his mother had a good naming sense since she was very well educated. She was the one who named Li Tuenming, which meant fate. Me? Wei Jing brought the little chick to eye level and thought briefly, before saying, for three years, Chen Ming had fumbled around in the dark. You, and you alone, brought light back to his life. Though you may be small and weak right now, you gave us hope, like fireflies in the black night. Therefore, your name will be Ying Hui, Firefly. What do you think? Me, Ying Huat? The little chick froze up, perhaps already feeling a special connection with the name. But it's not cheeky enough, and doesn't match its image. That's false advertising. Li Tuenming smiled. No. I want this name. That triggered the little chick, who flew into a frenzy trying to peck Li Tuenming to death. Ha ha. It was hence decided that the eternal infernal phoenix would get a new name, Yinghua. Li Tuenming hardly considered the day a success. He had failed to make Li Yang foam bow before him, and he thought it would be a sorry night. But with mother being so relaxed, and the little chick so cheerful, he still managed to lay down his burdens for the night and have a good laugh. This was what home truly feels like. A mother that's unconditionally confident in her son, forever showering her son with love and care. A brother that he could joke around with, but would also fight together till their last breath. He was expecting more siblings to join him as well, since there were still nine eggs, with one of them already showing signs of hatching. Li Tuenming couldn't wait for this new member of the family. The only regrettable matter was that his mother looked even older under the candlelight. The knowledge that she could just leave him any time frightened him even more than the prospect of his own death. We're out of clear spirit grass, the only thing that can make mother's life easier. It was already the middle of the night, but Li Tuenming was still deep in thought. I'll put aside Liu Qianyang and the Flame Yellow Order for now. I'll make a trip to the Red Twill Mountain now and try to gather more clear spirit grass. Before my strength recovered, each trip to Red Twill Mountain was accompanied by life-threatening dangers, which was why mother didn't allow me to go. But I can convince her now that I'm a lot stronger. The clear spirit grass wasn't exactly a precious herb, but the main problem was its scarcity. Most people had no use for it, making it hard to come by in the market. The only source was Red Twill Mountain. For the next two days, Li Tuenming helped to prepare everything his mother needed for a while. Although her life-bound beast was also sick, it could still help her in crucial moments. It's all right if you can't find any, just remember to come back as soon as possible. Even when the time arrived for him to take his leave, Wei Jing was reluctant. She knew she didn't have much time left, and all she wanted was to have Li Tuenming by her side. Of course. Li Tuenming said, before embarking on his next journey. Next stop, Red Twill Mountain. Chapter 15, Goddess on Earth The terrain around Red Twill Mountain was rough, covered mostly by hills and forests. Occupied by deadly wild beasts and venomous creatures, it was a place where only the fittest could survive. Countless corpses of both men and beast were hidden under the mushy soil and dead leaves, forgotten by the rest of the world. It only got more dangerous at night, with a vision suppressing fog and the constant threat of being attacked by deadly creatures. Li Tuenming had spent two days on the outskirts of the mountain, where there were many others trying to gather plants and herbs, so there was little reward. Now, with his cultivation having returned, he decided to venture further in. I wonder if they sell clear spirit grass in Ignispolis. If they don't, I better prepare more, Li Tuenming muttered. Ignispolis was the capital of the Vermilion Bird. Not only were Flame Yellow Science Institute and Lightning Manor located in Ignispolis, it was also home to the Vermilion Bird Clan, the rulers of the nation. Even after two days of non-stop searching, Li Tuenming could only find a single clear spirit grass. Please let there be more in the deeper parts of the mountain. The deeper parts were dangerous places that even skilled and experienced beast masters would not venture into. After all, wild beasts were fundamentally different from life-bound beasts, the latter were intelligent creatures capable of communicating with each other, whereas wild beasts were not capable of thinking and relied on hunting others to get stronger. That is, a fire lingji. 
On their third day in the inner parts of the mountain, Li Tuenming and Yinghua found a rare Lingji mushroom on a hard-to-reach cliff. The Lingji even burned when a beam of sunlight shone onto it. Let me do it. The little chick flapped its wings, picking the mushroom off the cliff in the blink of an eye. Time to run. The duo left resolutely after picking the herb. After all, natural treasures like this were often guarded by wild beasts. Spirit herbs were beneficial even to the wild beasts, but they were cautious about it. Consuming the Lingzi directly would cause the spiritual energy to implode inside the wild beast's body, killing it immediately. This was why treasures like these were left there to be absorbed at their guardian's leisure. The world was filled with spiritual energy, and if ores could absorb these energy from the ground to form spirit ores, plants could too. After spending enough time in absorbing spiritual energy from their atmosphere, these plants would slowly develop heavenly patterns. Just like spirit ores, plants that developed heavenly patterns were known as spirit herbs, their quality determined by the color of their heavenly patterns. Similar to the spirit ores, there were nine different colors ranging from red to white, with red ones being the most common and white heavenly patterns being the rarest. Clear spirit grass only has red heavenly patterns and can be considered as the lowest tier of spirit herbs. That said, it still has significant medical uses. Li Tuenming exclaimed while studying the fire lingzi. It had a slightly charred orange heavenly pattern, which suggested that the fire lingzi was a tier 2 spirit herb. Excellent, here's your share. Just as Li Tianming was thinking how much he could sell the fire lingzi for, the little chick tore it into half, and the spiritual energy inside the herb began to dissipate. What are you doing? Nincompoop. If I can eat spirit ores, then what is stopping me from eating this? Linghua glared at him while tossing half the plant into his face. Before he knew it, the little chick had already pecked down a good portion of its share of the fire lingzi. Wow, I'm burning. For all its boasting, Yinghua's skin was now burning, and the little fireball began to hop around madly. Yes, that hits the spot. The eternal infernal phoenix was indeed an amazing creature, capable of tolerating such a strong burst of energy. It even started to use the eternal infernal codex to refine the energy from the herb. In comparison, other beasts would never consume it like this, and would probably take a dozen days to slowly refine and absorb it. Li Tuenming, I dare you to eat it, though I doubt if you have the balls. He, Yinghua taunted. Ha, Li Tuenming laughed. It wasn't the first time he had a burning stomach. With a few quick bites, he swallowed the fire lingji. The herb turned into a numbing, scorching stream of lava as it slid down his throat, and as it entered his stomach, it didn't feel that much different from swallowing magma. It took the fire lingji years to absorb enough essences to form the orange heavenly patterns. Other than these two monsters, no one else could even imagine eating it raw, which was only possible due to the eternal infernal body's extraordinary fire immunity. Before long, Li Tuenming started burning like a fireball too. Of course, this was a great opportunity for him to cultivate. Using the tremendous amount of energy the two had just absorbed, Li Tuenming and Yinghua channeled their beast veins to convert this energy into eternal infernal beast key as they sought to enter fifth level beast vein. As they slowly converted this blazing energy to their own, their pain also eased and it got easier and easier. After a while, they had completely absorbed the fire lingji. As expected, the two of them made a breakthrough to the fifth level of the beast vein stage. Ah, cultivating with you makes me feel like we are spending the night together. That's disgusting, I want to find a pretty girl and they cultivate with her instead. The little chick pretended to sigh, even though the breakthrough just gave him a ton of energy. You're in the wilderness right now, the chances of you finding a female ghost is way higher, Li Tianming joked. He had already reached fifth level beast vein, his power almost comparable to three years ago. Such incredible improvement speed was only made possible with the blood of the primordial chaos beast. With his current strength, he could probably easily beat Li Zifeng without even using his fire immunity. But this is still not good enough for Liu Chenyang, who is at ninth level beast vein, Li Tuenming frowned at the thought of that teenager. After absorbing the fire Lingdi, they ventured further into the mountain. Li Tuenming removed the glove from his left hand to make use of the third eye on it. 
he realized the vision from this single eye was even clearer than the ones his actual eyes could offer. The little chick shuddered. Don't use it to look at me, it makes me uneasy. What a coward. Li Tuanming would never let a chance for him to laugh at Ying Hua slip past him. Just as the little chick was about to rebut, they heard a loud rumbling sound, like that of a falling tree, in the distance. At the same time, the ground began to tremble, and faint bestial roars echoed from the source of the rumbling sound. Wild beast! Li Tuanming recognized it at once, a wild beast's roar was infused with a uniquely distinct primal quality, as a creature that lacked intelligence and followed its base desires. Just as they were about to run away from the wild beast, Li Tuanming suddenly froze on the spot, his eyes staring at the beast's direction. A female ghost. The little chick, who was standing on top of his head, was also shocked by what it just saw, its eyes wide open. They were right about the wild beast, but it was busy chasing someone, this female ghost Yinghua was referring to. Ghost? That's totally a goddess. Li Tuanming had seen plenty of beauties back at the Flame Yellow Science Institute, one of them being Mu Qingqing. Ignispolis had gathered many of Vermilion Bird Nation's most beautiful women, some of them talented, and others with reputable background. Even back in Flamehaven, there were a good number of charming ladies like Liu Qing, whose smile could make many men lose their mind. And yet, despite his prior experiences, time seemed to stop as Li Tuanming looked at the figure running towards him. The girl appeared to be shrouded in a glistering white mist, her silky black hair flowing like black ink. Her face had a smooth oval shape, the facial features perfectly balanced on it like a piece of art. This was especially true for her eyes, bright and mesmerizing like the stars under a dreamy night sky. She wore a turquoise long skirt that pleasantly brought out the charm of her thin waist. Her fair skin was as fine as the most exquisite of jade, so soft it looked like it would break from the lightest touch. Such a girl sure looked like she was a goddess who had just descended from the heavens, and had never experienced the taint of the mortal world before. The most unforgettable thing to Li Tuanming was still the sparkling of her skin. Unlike normal people, her skins glistened as if they were gems, giving off a soft glow in the darkness. It was exactly this glow that formed the white mist that surrounded her. Li Tuanming never knew there were people so beautiful, who could make the whole world bow before their charm. The girl's appearance seemed to brighten up the forest, making Li Tuanming forget about all the bloodshed and danger it hid. How could a human body give off such a pleasant glow? The girl's presence made his mind go blank. A sentiment appeared in his heart. It was a feeling he couldn't understand, and yet he knew that the two of them knew each other before, that this encounter was one decided by fate. I must admit, I'm in love. Even the little chick was defeated by her beauty after getting a better look. Cut your crap, we need to save her. Chapter 16, Possessed by a Ghost Li Tuanming sped to her side with all the speed he could muster, he wasn't about to let such a beautiful girl die in front of him. The trees transformed into a blur as the little chick hung on for dear life. Screeching, its claws clung onto Li Tuanming tightly, its little body buffeted by the passing air. Ah, Li Tuanming. So this is the kind of person you were. Hose before brothers, you horn dog. The little chick cursed as the violent jolt shook it. The distance continued to shrink, allowing Li Tuanming to view the girl's overwhelming beauty with greater clarity, especially that extraordinary luster that surrounded her. Then he saw the girl smile adorably, her dimples and twinkling eyes lighting up his vision. The wild beast behind her was quite scary, but Li Tuanming fortunately made it in time. He reached out and grabbed hold of the girl's slender waist. A moment later, her body abruptly crumbled away, vanishing like a puff of smoke. What happened? The strange event seemed to justify the little chick's address of female ghost. He sensed a comprehensive increase of his power. First came his body. After enjoying the primordial chaos beast treatment, his eternal infernal body possessed already higher than average strength. And yet, his bodily strength somehow began to surge. His eternal infernal beast key followed suit a moment later. Although his beast key's quantity didn't increase, it had imbibed an odd quality that made it more explosive. When Li Tuanming lowered his head, he noticed that his skin had taken on the same luster that had infused the girl just now. 
he was now giving off that sparkling light now as well, what in the world was going on? Big brother, please dodge. A gentle voice entered his ears. Such a pleasant voice had to belong to that girl, Li Tuenming was sure of it. If she hadn't died or crumbled to bits, where was she? As Li Tuenming continued to wonder, the voice said, Big brother, now's not the time for that. Why don't we run first? Sounds like a good plan. That murderous wild beast had already found a new prey in Li Tuenming. It was a tall and savage ape, with a muscular body that sported golden, sharp fur from head to toe. Li Tuenming recognized it as a two-star wild beast, the golden ape. Overlords amongst their two-star brethren, they could contend with the eighth level of the beast vein stage upon maturity. Obviously, the one in front of them had already reached adulthood. The star rating for wild beasts and lifebound beasts were similar, but for lifebound beasts it was chiefly determined by their potential, unlike wild beasts where their strength determined it. While a lifebound beast that had reached its limits was going to be strong, a six-star lifebound beast still in its growth phase wasn't necessarily a match for a grown two-star wild beast. There was no time to hide. At this critical moment, both Li Tuenming and the little chick chose to fight. Using ghost step to sidestep the enemy's pounce, Li Tuenming clenched his fist, delivering a dragon mammoth heavy strike towards the back of the ape's head. The ground shook. The golden ape had blocked the strike, but the force from it had sent it flying away, such was Li Tuenming's strength. That strong? The man himself was a little confused. He could feel he was stronger than when he beat Li Zifeng by two whole levels. However, he had only broken through once since then. It therefore went without saying that that fairy-like girl was the reason. Take this, you nugget. The fierce little chick seized the opportunity to rush straight at the ape's eye, targeting its weak spot. Battle arts had martial and beast arts. Dragon Mammoth Heavy Strike's beast art counterpart was the Dragon Mammoth Heavy Claw, which the little chick was already proficient in. Its tiny claw was in no way an impediment to unleashing mighty power. Running? Under their encirclement, the ape fled as soon as it got up. Primates like these were right at home in Red Twill Mountain range. If it wanted to run, it wasn't going to be possible to catch up. There wasn't much point in chasing either. And with that, the crisis was averted. Still, Li Tuenming was left rather bewildered. After all, if the girl hadn't caused that increase in strength, the little chick and him would have been no match for the golden ape. The woods were finally quiet. Ha ha, you're glowing all over. Well, at least you're bright now, physically. The little chick rolled over laughing. Li Tuenming lowered his head, just in time to catch the luster receding. It regathered in front of him, returning into that girl earlier on within a moment. Li Tuenming could now see her clearly. She really was like a fairy, possessing almost inhuman beauty. Hold up, was she attached to him just now? Was this actually a person, or some kind of ghostly possession? Big brother, thank you for saving me just now. The girl seemed to enjoy smiling, giving another adorable and dimpled smile. Error? Li Tuenming's mind went blank, his words slurring into an incomprehensible mess. Pretty girl, ignore him. He's just a regular old nitwit. The little chick hopped onto Li Tuenming's shoulder, speaking solemnly. Let me introduce myself. The name's Huei Ying Huei. I'm this nitwit's guardian chicken. How cute! The girl picked it up and placed it onto her palm, her eye shining as she rubbed its head. Pretty girl, don't do that. I'm neither a pet nor someone easy. Oops, sorry. The girl returned the little chick to Li Tuenming, then looked expectantly at him. Big brother, could you give it to me? No problem. Remember to add some mushrooms when you stew it. Satisfaction guaranteed. Li Tuenming happily captured the little chick, cursing it internally, let's see if you'll dare pick up girls again. The girl chuckled in amusement. Li Tuenming really liked the simple pure smile she had. Once upon a time, there had been a girl like that too. However, after she had joined the Flame Yellow Science Institute, competition had gradually changed her. Big brother, you really are rather funny. I was just joking, I know it's your lifebound beast. 
I'm Jiang Filing. What's your name? Ah uh, well his name is honestly kinda, really, very dumb. He's called Li Tuanming, the Li Tianming that means fate. The little chick cut in. Big brother Tianming. The girl smiled again, clearly amused by the temperament a cute little chick had. Lil Sislinger, you're quite pretty. The shameless little chick continued. Thank you, big brother. Ying Hui. Little sister Linger, where's your life-bound beast? Considering how shameless the little chick was being, Li Tuanming had no choice but to follow up. I don't have one. I never was born with one. Her voice was casual, like she didn't care. Li Tuanming realized she seemed to be like an ordinary person, without any beast key at all. If you didn't have a life-bound beast, you couldn't cultivate. You don't? Then just now. Although I don't have a life-bound beast, I have some special abilities. These are secrets, but there's this strange sense of familiarity I feel, like we've known each other for years, that makes me trust you. She looked at Li Tuanming guilelessly. You have that feeling too. Li Tuanming's heart trembled. Why? The more he talked with her, the more he breathed in her scent, the stronger the sense of comfortableness and familiarity grew. He felt like they had known each other forever, but he could have sworn they had never met before. I find it strange too. My spiritual attachment reached complete synchronization for the first time in my life just now. The best synergy I've ever had is Chinga, who was born on the same year, same month, same day as me. Even then, it's a grade 6 attachment. What is spiritual attachment? Li Tuanming asked curiously. It's the process that lets me transform my physical body into a spiritual body. It's an innate gift of mine that can comprehensively increase the combat power of whoever I attach myself to. A perfect attachment would likely raise it by a full stage. That is rather miraculous. A girl, born without a life-bound beast, was able to attach her spirit to others to boost their combat strength. The trust she had for him and that sense of familiarity didn't seem so far-fetched with a complete synchronization. Take a look at my fingernails. She raised her hand, revealing ten slender and snow-white fingers to Li Tuanming. He grabbed them on reflex, luxuriating in the soft warmness he felt. Big brother, the girl hurriedly pulled her hand back, her face reddening with acute shyness. Oops, Li Tuanming hurriedly said. He had acted before thinking just now. Just look at my fingernail. Her face was still flushed as she raised her hands. Strange symbols resembling heavenly patterns covered eight of them. They were complicated and abstruse, and simply gazing at them was already giving him a minor headache. Only two didn't have such markings. They shone like jewels, with strange power seemingly circulating within them. They say I have ten special abilities, except they've been sealed since birth. I've unlocked two of them, one of which is spiritual attachment, she indicated her right pinky, and this finger grants me the ability of temporal field. It lets me create a region of space where I can control the flow of time. She said, slightly proudly. Although she wasn't a beast master, these two special abilities did make her seem to be Vermilion Bird's most unique existence. Furthermore, there were eight other fingernails left, which would unlock at some unknown point. Linger, why not marry Li Tuanming? It'll be ridiculously overpowered if those two abilities of yours support Li Tuanming. The little chick suddenly said. That wouldn't be a good idea, right? We just met, the girl replied, flustered. Ignore it. It hasn't had a proper diet since young, so its brain has certain ah, deficiencies. Putting it bluntly, it's mildly retarded. Unable to endure it any further, Li Tuanming tossed the chick back into the life-bound space, preventing it from babbling any more nonsense. Li Tuanming, you tray to her, the little chick vanished before completing its curse, and peace returned once more. Li Tuanming was just about to take advantage of the situation and ask about her identity to create further opportunities to meet. When someone suddenly shot out from the right. Pushing Li Tianming away, the newcomer stood between the two, cutting his words short. Who are you, scoundrel? How dare you disrespect Linger? Chapter 17 The Little Fairy from Ignispolis 
the voice of the girl that suddenly appeared was clear and fierce. Li Tuanming hazarded a guess that she was the Ching'e Jiang filing had mentioned before. She was dressed in a simple yet elegant blue dress that showed off her slender figure. She had smooth skin, beautiful thin brows that rested on top of a pair of lively eyes. Whilst she wasn't that old, her body had developed in all the right places, with her blue dress accentuating lithe curves that weren't any worse than that beautiful Liu Qing. To finish it off, she possessed an unruly aura. When these two girls were side by side, one was like a goddess from a dream, unstained by the filth of the mortal world. The other was like a mortal princess, seven parts willful, two parts cute and one part charming. While Jiang filing with her luminescent skin was naturally more otherworldly, this overbearing and slender Ching'e also had extraordinary looks. Li Tuanming hadn't expected to meet such extraordinary beauties here in the wilderness. This Ching'e wasn't any less pretty than Mu Qingqing, and in fact even exceeded her in temperament. Li Tuanming had previously assumed that this Ching'e was possibly a maidservant. However, now he knew he was obviously wrong. Her bearing and aura were unordinary, terrifying even. This was a demeanor born from possessing peerless talent. Even in Ignispolis, such a person was likely to possess a high status. Don't scare him, Chinga. He's not a bad guy, he saved me just now when I was being chased by a wild beast. Is that so? Chinga finally relaxed her guard, before giving Li Tuanming a once-over. All right then, Shu. Don't have any untoward thoughts about Ling'a. Your pretty face belies a startling lack of manners. Li Tuanming retorted. Ching'e glared at him. Come again? Shocking beast key that surpassed the beast vein stage began to pour out of her. It meant she was likely a spirit source beast master. All who could reach it so young would be famous figures in Ignispolis. Ching'e, don't bully big brother. Let me tell you a surprise. Big brother? Excuse me? Ching'e's glare became even fiercer. Li Tuanming didn't know whether to laugh or cry. It seemed this girl had taken him to be a scoundrel who specialized in tricking naive little girls. Do you want to hear it? Jiang Filing pouted. Fine, go ahead. Ching'e said helplessly. Just now, I used spirit attachment on big brother. Guess what synchronization grade it reached? Jiang Filing blinked. Spiritual attachment? I told you to not just attach yourself to any random hobo. Ching'e said, her head aching. I had no choice, a wild beast was chasing me. Guess. Ching'e looked disdainfully at Li Tuanming. Hum, a hobo from the countryside. I give it a grade 2 maximum. Wrong. You definitely won't believe this, but it was a complete synchronization. Watch. Jiang Filing used spiritual attachment on Li Tuanming again, and he felt that violent power course through his body again. Damn! Ching'e was completely flummoxed to see it, and subconsciously slipped out a word that would have earned her some scandalized glances in public. See that? Complete synchronization. I also feel like I've known big brother Li Tuanming for ages. Jiang Filing smiled as she reformed, eye sparkling as she looked at Li Tuanming. Ching'e ground her teeth, hurriedly dragging Jiang filing over to her when she saw how close they were. Ling'a, you're being too naive. Don't always listen to other people's sweet talk. He must have deceived you when I wasn't around. Nope, he was very polite. Exactly, you've fallen for his trick, Ching'e gritted her teeth and continued, let me tell you, men are bad eggs. Of course he's nice to you, you're pretty. But so what if there's complete synchronization? A hobo from the countryside will never make anything of himself. Sister, how many men have you hurt by saying that? Li Tuanming was getting more annoyed with her as time went by. Were there really people like this who belittled others so much? No matter what, he really had helped Jiang filing. Looking to die? Ching'e's head snapped towards Li Tuanming as she glared at him coldly, that highborn aura on full blast again. Ching'e! Jiang Filing got angry before Li Tuanming did. He hadn't actually expected this little fairy to be able to get angry. Though, he did notice she was quite cute when she got angry. 
Fine, let's ignore him then. We need to return to Ignispolis already, we've been out for too long already. Chinga didn't want to make her unhappy, so she quickly reigned in her temper. All right. Jiang Filing looked disappointed. All right, you scoundrel, we're leaving. I'll thank you for helping Linga, but erase any other thoughts you have. Both of you belong to two different worlds, so don't daydream. Just focus on your farming, Chinga spoke warningly. You don't happen to have some issue up here, do you? Li Tianming tapped his head. You scoundrel, I, she gnashed her teeth in fury. How many would dare speak to her in this way in Ignispolis? Linga, where do you stay in Ignispolis? I'll come look for you in the future. Don't tell him. Chinga covered her mouth before saying to Li Tuenming, What Ignispolis? With your background, really, just focus on farming and contributing to Vermilion Bird's food supplies. Let's go. After saying that, she felt her spirits lift as she ran away with Jiang filing. They quickly vanished into the shrubbery, leaving Li Tianming no chance to catch up even if he wanted to. However, he still gave a chuckle. Those two girls were rather interesting. Although one hadn't been very polite to him, it was because she had her guard up against him and was afraid Jiang Filing would be tricked by him. After all, that fairy-like girl was so pure that no one would want to see her sullied. I'm sure there'll be more chances for us to meet. Li Tenming didn't feel worried he wouldn't be able to find them. Chinga was definitely some famous figure in Ignispolis with her strength, and Ignispolis just so happened to be his next destination. Li Tuenming summoned the little chick back out. Li Tuenming! How could you hide me away like that? What unspeakable things did you do, you savage? Unbelievable, as your life-bound beast, this is an eternal stain on the awesome Ying Hua's honor. The little chick immediately started jabbering when he was released. Shush! Am I that sort of person to you? Do. I have seen you stick your hand in your pants. God damn it! I'm going to strangle you. Li Tuenming attempted to seize it to vent the disappointment after the girls left. I curse your future babies to not have butts. I curse you to fly solo forever. I curse your pecker to fall off. Man and bird jumped about as they quarreled, but they didn't slow down their search for clear spirit grass. Li Tenming only had one stalk, and he needed much, much more. Three days passed and Li Tianming had delved into the depths of Red Twill Mountain. Trees stood tall and the ground was littered with shrubbery and fallen leaves. Under such circumstances, it was impossible to guess where a venomous pest or wild beast may be lurking. He hadn't found any clear spirit grass, but he had quite the assortment of other spirit herbs. They were all important resources in this wild beast territory. Anywhere where spirit herbs grew would always have fierce beasts and venomous pests living there. As for any spirit herbs that grew using sunlight and possessed a fire-type nature, they would directly consume it. They were actually cultivating faster than in Flame Haven. In the past, he had taken years to reach fifth-level beast vein, but it was accomplished in twenty days this time round. The strong points of primordial chaos beasts lay not in their might when they were born, but in their talent and fortune. So far, they had only excavated less than one ten-thousandth of the eternal infernal phoenix's potential. Clear spirit grass. One evening, they crested a ridge to reach a flat area. Many sorts of vegetation and weeds were here, but clear spirit grass was a spirit herb and was easily identifiable even when mixed together with weeds. There were over ten stalks of it here, which was more valuable to Li Tuenming than a whole pouch of spirit gems. It was enough for him to comfortably bring his mother to Flame Yellow Science Institute. The heavens really didn't turn their back on people who tried. The pair quickly sped over. Mother will definitely be happy if I brought so much back. Danger! When they approached it, a streak of blue suddenly assaulted them. That blue might very well be poisonous, and as a general rule of thumb, a poisoned body was more troublesome than flesh wounds from blades. They quickly backed up and avoided the attack. When they came to a stop, they realized a black scorpion was next to the patch of clear spirit grass. It was as large as an eight-person table, its two pincers reminiscent of two hammers. Most fear-inducing was the blue tail held aloft, 
covered in a thick blue exoskeleton with a sharp stinger that was covered in an obviously poisonous blue liquid. That blue streak was likely that blue tail. Wild beast! Li Tuenming frowned. He felt something was off about this scorpion, and on closer inspection, he realized the eyes lacked the telltale savagery of wild beasts, but was instead filled by a human-like coldness. No, life-bound beast. It's the blue-tailed scorpion, a five-star life-bound beast. Li Tenming remembered reading about this life-bound beast's data before. The subject of life-bound beast species and type was endless, but it was still a compulsory course for any beast master. Li Tuenming had started from young, but it was still difficult to recognize every single life-bound beast because just too many kinds had appeared in history. For species, life-bound beasts could generally be divided into the categories of avian, terrestrial, bug and fish. However, it didn't end there. There were also reptiles, tortoises, crocodiles, amphibians, frogs, salamanders, shellfish, snails, squids, annelids, earthworms, leeches, cnidarians, jellyfish, sea anemones, and so on. While these species looked weak, they weren't necessarily so. Some jellyfish and tortoise lifebound beasts could be eight or nine star. In fact one of the mightiest powerhouses in the flame yellow continent had a nine star lifebound beast that was technically an earthworm, but was called the earth hell hornworm. Lifebound beasts also had types. They ran the gamut from metal, wood, water, fire, earth, lightning, wind, light, dark, poison to others like star, shadow, explosion, moonlight, illusion, sound, purification, life, transformation, berserker, control, steel-clad, and broodmother. Types were the most basic characteristic of life-bound beasts. Metal, wood, water, fire, earth, lightning, and wind were known as elemental types. Elemental types took up over 90% of all life-bound beasts, but the more unorthodox ones could be even more frightening, like the rare broodmother type, of which ant and bee queens would belong to. They could spawn large numbers of offspring to act as an army. Largely speaking, any life-bound beast could be fixed into the box of species and a type, like Li Xuejiao's flaming hawk was a fire-type avian beast. Liu Qianyang's lightning bolt cheetah would be a lightning-type terrestrial beast and this blue-tailed scorpion was a poison-type arachnid beast. Poison types could be considered one of the more unorthodox types. It may have lacked the raw power of the elements, but it was definitely scarier when the poison entered your body. However, if there was a life-bound beast, there was always a beast master. As expected, the next moment, a thin young man in long, green robes ran over and landed in front of Li Tuenming. Right on the clear spirit grass. Li Tuenming frowned. Chapter 18, A Fight for the Clear Spirit Grass Li Tuenming took a closer look at the youth in green robes who was obviously not from Flame Haven. He didn't expect to see a stranger in the deepest parts of Red Twill Mountain. Why is it so easy to run into geniuses these days? Li Tuenming thought. One glance was enough to tell that the youth was at Li Zifeng's level. There was no reason for him to fall out with the youth, but he needed the clear spirit grass which was below the youth's feet. Li Tuenming winced as the youth stepped forward, crushing two strands of the grass under his feet, causing the spiritual energy to dissipate. You aren't from the lightning manor, so what gave you the courage to step foot in this part of the mountain? Aren't you afraid to die? The youth in green glared at Li Tuenming, arrogance radiating off his very being. Lightning manor? Of course I'm not from the lightning manor. Li Tuenming was stunned by the question. What did the Lightning Manor have to do with this? What do you mean? Are you from the Lightning Manor and telling me that only people from the manor are allowed entry to Red Twill? Disciples of the Lightning Manor generally had lightning-type life-bound beasts, while this boy's beast was poison-type, so Li Tuenming thought the odds of him being from the Lightning Manor weren't high. Well since I asked that question, it should be obvious that I'm from Lightning Manor. I'll let you know that the Lightning Manor has things to do in Red Twill, and that if you don't scram from the mountain right now, you'll never make it out alive again. The youth's arrogance lent credit to his claim from Lightning Manor. Unbridled megalomania seemed to be a common trait among the geniuses of Lightning Manor, Liu Qianyang included. Sure I'll leave right now. I was planning to anyway, 
but I just hope to gather some clear spirit grass here to cure my mother's illness. I'd appreciate it if you'd just give me a minute or so. Clear spirit grass? The youth in green lowered his head, noticing the spirit herb with red heavenly patterns under his feet. Yes, a few strands and I'll be on my way, Li Tuenming replied. Oh. The youth nodded. Just as Li Tuenming thought the youth was about to make way for him, the youth ground his foot against the ground, killing all the clear spirit grass, while smiling at Li Tuenming. If I tell you to scram, I expect you to ask how far. How dare some bumpkin like you bargain with me? Li Tuenming was pretty good-tempered in general, and never one to pick a fight. But in this case all the youth needed to do was to back off a few steps. To make it worse, he destroyed the clear spirit grass when he himself clearly didn't need it. Li Tuenming couldn't tolerate this kind of outrageous insult, especially not when the grass was needed to save Wei Jing's life. Li Tuenming seethed with fury, what with the clear spirit grass all dead and the intolerable smugness on the teenager's face. I don't care who you are, I'll kill you. Li Tuenming cursed, his crimson blood dagger already in his right hand. He clenched his left fist so hard, it almost tore the cloth used to cover it. You bastard! The little chick was way more irascible than Li Tuenming, shooting out from the top of Li Tuenming's head like a bullet. The youth could never imagine an bumpkin had the courage to pick a fight with him. Are they idiots? End them! He clearly didn't see a need to confront the pair himself, commanding his life-bound beast to attack Li Tuenming instead. You can only blame your luck on entering the mountain at this wrong time. We can't risk the odd chance that you become the first to find the manor, the youth muttered in a soft voice that Li Tuenming couldn't catch. Despite its size, the blue-tailed scorpion was incredibly agile. Its razor-sharp claws and poisonous tails were as deadly as top-quality bestial weapons. The scorpion made use of these to hunt down prey in the fastest time possible, poisoning them in the process. Bang! The moment Li Tuenming's black arm clashed against the blue tail scorpion's claws, he knew that his opponents were at seventh level beast vein stage. Considering that the lifebound beast was poison type, Li Zifun would probably be no match to him, but that was not the case for Li Tuenming. On top of that, the youth had yet to make a move, which presented a great chance for Li Tuenming to take them down one by one. Now! Since the chick and him could communicate telepathically, they could coordinate perfectly during battle. It was the bloody soul hunt. Li Tuenming and Ying Hui executed the supreme beast rank battle art at the same time, Li Tuenming using its battle arts and the little chick using the bestial arts. The bloody soul hunt placed great emphasis on the movements of its users, and within the bat of an eye, Li Tuenming had dashed in front of the blue-tailed scorpion. With that being said, the move synergized even better with the little chick. Given its small size and its ability to fly, the little chick was even harder to catch when using the bloody soul hunt to look for its opponent's weakness. In the case of the blue-tailed scorpion, the Achilles heel was its eyes. The scorpion, on the other hand, didn't even consider the little chick to be a threat, its focus only on Li Tuenming. It was almost as fast as Li Tuenming, its pincers aiming directly for where Li Tuenming's arm was, ready to snap his arm into half. Say goodbye to your arm. The youth smiled when he saw Li Tuenming's arm caught by the blue-tailed scorpion. Clank! The sound was loud and crisp. Hearing that, the youth relaxed. He was almost certain that it was the sound of Li Tuenming's arm snapping, but upon taking a closer look he was completely stunned. How could it be? In contrast to Li Tuenming's unscathed arm, the blue-tailed scorpion's pincer was riddled with cracks. It was an unimaginable sight. What a fool, you have no idea how tough his hand is. The little chick laughed. Li Tuenming, unharmed by the scorpion's attacks, made use of that opening to stab the blue-tailed scorpion's eye with his crimson blood dagger, causing green blood to spurt all over the place. At the same time, the little chick charged at the scorpion's other eye, its sharp beak tearing it out. Congratulations! Your prize today is one blind life-bound beast. The little chick taunted the youth in green as it rose back into the air. The severely injured blue-tailed scorpion could do nothing but roll on the ground from the sheer pain of losing both eyes. Even with the best medicine, it might never see again given that amount of damage. Next comes your leg. 
Li Tuenming was done with the blue-tailed scorpion and had already locked onto his next target. The youth had crushed all of the clear spirit grass, and Li Tuenming was going to make sure he paid for that. Go to hell! The youth just recovered from the shock of his life-bound beast's defeat, and in his fury he drew several needles. Those silver needles were evidently top-quality bestial weapons, made with precious spirit ores. Li Tuenming had a hunch that they were heart-piercing needles, poisonous weapons with a distinctive blue tip. Zoom! The youth threw the needle straight at Li Tuenming and the little chick. Sadly for him, his weapon was countered by the pair using Bloody Soul Hunt. Top-tier movement arts could easily dodge this kind of attacks, and once the heart-piercing needle missed, the youth would be directly exposed to Li Tuenming's attacks. Within moments, Li Tuenming and his little chick had the youth surrounded. Li Tuenming's black arm balled up, and with the crimson blood dagger in his right hand, he struck out mercilessly. Using a sudden burst of his eternal infernal beast key, he landed a direct punch on the youth's abdomen area, sending the poor boy flying back. Bang! The youth struggled to climb up from the ground, blood dribbling out of his mouth. So you weren't as useless as you look, but I'll let you know that I'll still kill you. I'm gonna flay the flesh off your body piece by piece and have you begging me to give you a quick death. His eyes were blazing murderously. For someone who can't even stand up now, you sure like to talk big. Li Tuenming stared at the youth coldly. No matter how much he beat up the youth, the clear spirit grass wasn't coming back. You deserve another slap. The youth was sent flying backwards again, leaving a trail of snot and blood in his wake. For someone who was deriding Li Tianming as a bumpkin just moments ago, the youth sure was in a bad state. Which damned leg of yours stepped on the clear spirit grass again? Li Tianming asked, jabbing his crimson blood dagger into the youth's thigh. But it was at that moment, something unexpected happened. Arf! Dad, Mum, save me! The youth let out a piercing shriek that echoed through the forest. Damn it! Li Tuenming was caught by surprise. Why would the youth take his parents with him on a trip to Red Twill? If he was from the Lightning Manor, then his parents must be too. If they caught Li Tuenming, he would be in deep shit. It was time for a tactical retreat. The landscape of Red Twill Mountain were complicated, and if Li Tuenming got a head start, there was still a good chance of him making it out. Don't you dare run. Before night falls, you'll be hunted down. And when you meet the King of Hell, tell him Zhong Zishuan sent you there. As Li Tianming scrambled for the bushes, the youth roared behind him. Zhong Zishuan? What a crappy, overused name. Li Tianming muttered as he disappeared into the foliage. Chapter 19 The Princess Arrives Just as Li Tianming made it a few hundred meters away into the jungle, Thinking that he had escaped from danger, he ran into someone unexpected. It was Jiang Filing and Ching'e. He could only imagine that it was fate that brought them together again. Ching'e was definitely a talented girl born from a reputable family, and with her pretty looks, she would no doubt be the center of attention everywhere she went. Yet, when placed alongside Jiang Filing, Li Tuenming couldn't help but direct most of his attention on Jiang Filing. No other word, but perfection could describe her fairy-like presence. Weren't they about to return to Ignispolis? Why are they still here? Li Tuenming thought curiously. But more importantly, he was still being hunted by members of the Lightning Manor. They would be in danger too. No time to explain, we need to run. Li Tuenming charged straight at them, ready to grab one with each hand and bring the both of them with him. No matter how talented Ching'e may be, there's no way she could win against two adults. Why are you running? Stop there. Ching'e folded her arms to dodge Li Tuenming while rolling her eyes at him. Meanwhile, the two girls' appearance had delayed Li Tuenming's escape, and within moments, a middle-aged couple had caught up with him. The couple was clearly boiling with anger. Just a minute they took their eyes off their precious son and he was already beaten up by an outsider? Just as they were about to bring Li Tianming to justice, a girl in green blocked their way. Princess Ching Greetings, Princess Ching, I am Zhong Chong from the Lightning Manor, and this is my wife. It is an honor for you to grace us with your presence here. The middle-aged man hurriedly lowered his head to show as much deference as possible. 
Princess? No way, only one type of person in Vermilion Bird would be addressed as Princess. They were the daughters of the Vermilion Bird King, Li Tuenming could tell that Ching'e was from a reputable family, but the Vermilion Bird clan, rulers of the land? Even with his status as a Flame Yellow Science Institute disciple three years ago, he would never dream of talking to a princess. Even Lin Xiaoting, the number one genius in Heaven Sanctum right now, had to bow in front of her like what Zhong Chong just did. After all, her father was the ruler of this land. A brief recollection of what he said two days ago left Li Tuenming in a cold sweat. Did he really ask a princess what's wrong with her head? With that information, Li Tuenming roughly gauged Princess Ching's strength to be close to Lin Xiuting's level. The Vermilion Bird clan had after all controlled Vermilion Bird for millennia, and their clan's history and wealth definitely surpassed that of Lightning Manners. Dispense with the formalities. Ching'e waved her hands at the couple, but her eyes were trained on Li Tuenming. From that smug look, he could almost hear her saying, Now that you know who I am, do you still want to jeer at me? For what noble purpose is the princess doing in Red Twill Mountain Range? There's many wild beasts around here, and if the princess is not well protected, Zhong Chong's head was still lowered. And who told you I am not protected? Ching'e didn't let him finish his sentence. Now that she was no longer hiding her identity as a princess, her voice had a natural sense of nobility to it. This scared Zhong Chong from speaking any further. Forgive him, princess, but Zhong Chong was simply too concerned about your highness' safety that he panicked. Of course with the princess's identity, how was it possible to not have experts protecting your highness? Zhong Chong's wife hastily tried to cover up her husband's blunder. As for Zhong Zixuan, he had just caught up with the group. But when he saw that even his parents had their heads lowered, he didn't dare to utter a word. The atmosphere was tense, and only Jiang Filing was winking at Li Tuenming with a smile on her face. Seeing her smile, Li Tuenming knew that his safety was in good hands, just that there was no escape from being laughed at by Ching'e later. You said you were Zhong Chong from the Lightning Manor? Ching'e had her hands behind her back, her actions befitting her noble family background. Yes, your highness. The man could only nod his head. And what is the Lightning Manor doing here? I saw a few others from your manor around here two days ago. Uh, Zhong Chong hesitated for a brief moment. Tired of living? Ching'e asked. I plead for your forgiveness, princess. I'll talk. Zhong Chong was sweating all over, a totally different figure as compared to when he just appeared. Unfortunately, he ran into someone way more powerful than him. My patience is wearing thin, Ching'e said. Li Tuenming was equally curious about their business in Red Twill. Here's the full story, your highness. The Lightning Manor has found mana at the Red Twill mountain range, and we selected seven juniors to compete for it. They will each have seniors accompanying them, but we are not allowed to affect the competition in any way, and are only here to ensure their safety. Zhong Chong explained the entire event. What tier is this manor? The word and manner I clearly sparked Ching'e's interest. Even if she didn't need it, the lowest royal manner were still pricey treasures. Your Highness, it is but substandard manner that can't even be rated royal. It is only capable of evolving a lifebound beast to six stars. Substandard? You are aware of the consequences of lying, correct? Ching'e looked slightly disappointed. Clearly the manner wasn't good enough to arouse her interest. I would never dare to. My son didn't have much hope of getting it anyway, so there's no reason for me to deceive your highness. Zhong Chong gave a bitter smile. That being said, the lowest tier manor could already be considered a treasure in Flame Haven. Perhaps only the real elites from Heaven's Division or the Vermilion Bird Clan would find no use for it. I doubt you have the gall to do so anyway. You may disappear from my sight now. Ching'e waved her hands again her eyes filled with impatience. We thank you, princess, my family and I will take our leave now. Zhong Chang was clearly relieved that this was over. As he signaled his wife and Zhong Zixuan to take their leave, the couple approached Li Tuenming, ready to bring him with them. Wait. Ching'e glanced at Li Tuenming and said unhappily, leave the pig here. 
Li Tuenming stared in disbelief. Did she just call him a pig? But princess, he's just a local bumpkin who assaulted my son's life-bound beast. We just wish to teach him a lesson, Zhong Chong said. Your Highness, may I ask for permission to take revenge for my life-bound beast, Zhong Zishuan finally mustered up his courage to speak in front of the princess. No, you may not. I want this pig here. Now begone. Ching'e said again, leaving no room for bargaining. At one side, Li Tuanming couldn't help but sigh. If it wasn't for the two girls stopping him here, he would be long gone. Instead, he was stuck here listening to the princess calling him a pig. But princess? Out of my sight. Now. Don't make me repeat myself. Ching'e was not going to give them any chance. Zhang Zixuan's face bloated up in anger, but he couldn't utter a single word as his father forcefully dragged him away. Even when leaving, he continued to tremble as if he was having constipation. He even turned back multiple times to stare at Li Tuanming with a burning hatred. Only when they were completely gone did Li Tuanming turn to face Princess Qing. What are you staring at? Not happy with me calling you a pig? Qing'e stared back at him, her puffy cheeks making her cuter than usual. Of course I'm happy. How dare I be unhappy with the princess? Li Tuanming replied. Chinga, don't treat big brother like this. He did save me a few days back. Jiang Filing ran back to Li Tuanming's side the moment the Zhong family left. Big brother, are you injured? Not at all, thank you for your concern, Linga. Gentle girls like you are hard to come by these days. Li Tuanming smiled. Are you hinting that I'm not gentle? Chinga quirked an eyebrow. Hey, I didn't say that. Whatever. I give you leave to return to your farming, while we return to Ignispolis. See you, or rather, hope to never see you again. Chinga dragged Jiang filing back to her side, as if she wished for Li Tuanming to stay as far away from her Linga as possible. Chinga, a moment. I have something important to say to Big Brother. Jiang Filing said. Something important? Li Tuanming was taken aback. Chapter 20, Next, Manner. Big Brother, our appearance here isn't a coincidence actually. Since we parted two days ago, Chinga said she wanted to follow you for a while more, and study why I could get a perfect synchronization with you. Therefore, We've been following you for a few days already. I hope you won't blame Linga for this. Jiang Filing explained sincerely. Of course not. Li Tuanming replied. He lowered his head to take a better look at the girl with the glowing skin. Her skin was so pure as if she walked straight out from a fairy tale. As her watery eyes stared at him, Li Tuanming could almost feel his heart being cleansed. Chinga still couldn't figure out the reason in the end, so she gave up. I just told her that there must be some kind of bond decided by fate between us. Next time when Big Brother comes to Ignispolis, remember to visit Linga. If I unlock any new abilities I'd want to try them out with you. Jiang Filing said, her eye sparkling with anticipation. Definitely. Of course I will visit you. Li Tuanming replied. You are not worthy enough to probably won't even be able to make it past the city guards, so just focus on farming at home. Ching'e rolled her eyes long and hard. She sure was determined about asking Li Tuanming to farm and contribute to her nation's food supplies. Ching'e, give Big Brother a jade pendant, so it's easier for him to come and find me next time. Right before they left, Jiang Filing had an idea. I don't want to. Ching'e pouted. Ching'e? Fine. Linga you've changed, you weren't like this before you met this pig. Chinga was clearly unwilling, but she still produced a jade pendant from her pocket and threw it at Li Tuanming. You stupid pig, better not let me catch you using my pendant for wrongdoings, or I will see to it that your chicken gets stewed alive. The little chick was truly unfortunate. This wasn't the first time someone wanted to make him their dinner. Big brother, if you get into situations like the one just now, just bring out the pendant and mention that you are under Princess Ching. This way, no one would dare to kill you, Jiang Filing said gently. Li Tuanming kept the pendant in his pocket gratefully. 
the one thing he was really lacking right now was backing, and this pendant was exactly what he needed. He couldn't hope for a better gift. Thank you, Linger. He thanked the girl solemnly. Big brother, who else should you thank? Jiang Filing blinked her eyes mischievously. Li Tuenming reacted immediately. Princess Ching, much thanks for your jade pendant. You are welcome. I warn you again, do not use this to scam others, and especially not to ruin my reputation. Jiang Qingwan's cheeks were still puffed up from her little tantrum. No worries, I solemnly swear upon my farmer honor that I will take this pendant off while farming so as to not stain it. Li Tuenming said solemnly. Princess Qing couldn't help but crack up from the joke. Finding it embarrassing to laugh out loud, she immediately went back to maintaining a straight face. Big brother, come here. Jiang Filing smiled too when listening to their conversation and beckoned Li Tuenming once they were done. Yeah? Li Tuenming asked. Got a secret for you, Jiang Filing replied. I'm listening. Li Tuenming lowered his head and brought his ears closer. He could smell her faint scent, a smell that he found almost intoxicating. From the corner of his eyes, the sight of the lass's cheeks made his heart pound faster than ever. Big brother, do you want the manor? It's over there. Jiang Filing whispered in his ears, while pointing. Li Tuenming was baffled. How did she know he wanted to find the manor? And how in the world did she know where the manor was? This must be that important thing she was referring to previously. For a seemingly normal girl with no beast key, Jiang Filing surprised him yet again. Just how many mysterious abilities does this girl have? Linga, let's go. Chinga rushed her. This time, they really needed to leave. Big brother, I'll see you again in Ignispolis. Before Li Tuenming could recover from his shock, the pair were already disappearing. Even after the two left, Li Tuenming was still dazed, complete with a bit of disappointment from not being able to see Linger in a while. It wasn't just because of her looks, but more of the sense of belonging he could feel when he was with her. Li Tuenming thought about the time they had together. She looked so pure and innocent, yet she was thoughtful and was able to figure out what he was thinking about. Not only did she get him a jade pendant from Princess Ching, a lifesaver for him, she also noticed his minute change in expression when he heard about the manor, which led her to point out the direction of the manor for him. Li Tuenming couldn't help but wonder just what other secrets this girl might hold. The fateful encounter with Jiang Filing had already left a permanent mark in his heart. Hyperactive hormones, eh? The little chick didn't miss this opportunity to laugh at Li Tuenming. I'll give you a choice. Grilled or stewed? Li Tuenming kept the pendant, his eyes still staring in the direction where Jiang Filing left. Ha! Huh? I can beat you single wingedly. The little chick jeered back smugly. And now? Li Tuenming brought up his left arm, the dark arm in full view. Our brother! The little chick's attitude took a 180-degree turn. Do you need a nice massage? Perhaps I can get you a drink? Much better now, Li Tuenming teased. Hum. Manner. Li Tuenming tried to recall the stories he heard about this treasure. It was said that manner was divine blessings given physical form. It came in all sorts of shapes, some stones, some gems, and some even appeared as liquids. Whenever a life-bound beast or a wild beast obtained a manner matching their type, it could trigger an evolution that enhanced the beast, boosting both the beast and its beast master's limits. Out of the four different tiers of mana, even the most common imperial ones were said to evolve a life-bound beast to seven stars. Seven stars. That was sufficient to forge the scariest beast masters. In Vermilion Bird, seven-star life-bound beasts were known as royal beasts, crowned as the king of life-bound beasts. Profound and terrestrial mana had even more absurd effects. For example, Terrestrial manner was capable of evolving life-bound beasts to legendary Saint Beasts. Saint Beasts stood at the pinnacle of the entire flame-yellow continent, and the Saint Beast war soul that Li Tianming once had was related to them. As for celestial manner, they appeared only in legends and myths. Yinghui, you mentioned that manner would be of great benefit to you. Li Tianming asked on a more serious note. That's right. 
When I heard about it, I managed to fish out quite a lot of information from my memory. Although my abilities as a primordial chaos beast were restricted when I became a lifebound beast, the evolution caused by mana can help me get rid of these restrictions. My primal instinct tells me that if I keep evolving, I may eventually go back to my original form as the Eternal Infernal Phoenix. Then what are we waiting for? We know you need the mana, and we know where it is, so let's not delightly any further. Li Tuenming told the little chick. Are you telling me you want to rob Lightning Manor's manor? They have seven contestants, each of them guarded by parents or seniors who could easily squash you, the little chick exclaimed. The pendant will come in handy against their parents. From the way Zhong Chong reacted to the princess, they're probably middle-class members of the Lightning Manor and do not have that much power in Ignispolis, Li Tuenming explained. The jade pendant meant that he had Princess Ching protecting him. Therefore all I need to deal with are the younger generations. Li Tuenming's eyes shrunk. While Lin Xiaoting may be the main culprit for Midas's death, plenty of disciples from Lightning Manor were at one side watching and cheering him on. Even if the ones in Red Twill Mountain were not present on that night, Li Tuenming just couldn't see them being friends, and probably would not resist his urge to punch them on sight. After all most of them, like Zhong Zixuan just now, were rotten to the core. Hey, I just realized something. The little chick suddenly said. What? Liu Qianyang mentioned that he would be staying in Flame Haven for a month, right? The only reason for him to stay that long is because he is contesting for the manor as well. As someone in ninth level beast vein, he probably has the highest chance of getting the manor. The little chick spoke with a hint of disgust, as it remembered how that teenager robbed Li Tuenming of his flame yellow order. You are right, he must be here. That means his sister Liu Qing and my father would be here too. Now this is getting interesting. The challenge ahead had gotten Li Tuenming burning with anticipation. What kind of a father is he? Giving the flame yellow order to Liu Chenyang, then bringing him here to win the manor. Are you sure you are his real son, not Liu Chenyang? The little chick spat. Indeed, how ironic it was that his father ousted him from the family and gave everything to an outsider. He used to come to Red Twill Mountain quite often, so you probably can't find someone more familiar with the terrain here. This Liu Qing, you reckon she married Li Yang Feng for her brother's flame yellow order and manner? Quite possible. Touching. Li Tuenming stood up, looking at the direction Jiang Filing left once again. Then that's even more reason for me to snatch this manner from you and ruin your plans, Li Yang Feng. And Liu Qianyang, just you wait, because I will take back what is rightfully mine. With that, Li Tuenming and Ying Hua delayed no further as the two of them marched on towards an inevitable fight. These were the next ten chapters of Beastmaster of the Ages. The next ten chapters will arrive next week. Stay tuned for world-defying Dan God tomorrow.